Hi everyone and welcome to Dream Space TV. You're joining us again in one Microsoft place in Dublin where we're about to embark on episode five. Wow. Can you believe it? I can't believe it, time's flying in. <laughs> I know, just one episode away from our competition. Woohoo! So in episode four, our last episode, what did we learn? Well, we learned all about good trouble. And what we did was we entered a world where we met John Lewis. And John Lewis was then our guide. And we went around different, different worlds. Like we went to discover independence for India yep. with Mahatma Gandhi. And then Corey, you went and visited Pakistan and met Malala Yousafzai yep. and looked at education for all. And then both of us came back and went and learned about the Black Lives Matter movement. And we hope you learned as much and enjoyed that lesson as much as we did. Now, in today's episode, we're actually going to be learning how to code in Minecraft Education Edition. So now would be a good time to pause and discuss. What do you think coding is? So coding is when we give a computer program a specific set of instructions to follow. And that might be to perform a specific task or to solve a problem. Now coding is going to be important because as Corey said in the next episode, we are going to announce what our competition is. And one of the things we do want you to include is some code. The other thing we've looked at across the last few episodes has been different kind of biomes yep. and different kind of worlds and habitats. Yep. So we want to change it up today, don't we, Corey? Yeah, we've been to space. Yeah. You know, we went to water. We've, we've been, been in blocks land. of grass. Yeah, we've yep. covered a couple of them. And this time we want to explore the ice plains, so a more kind of colder climate. So now would be a good time to pause and think about different countries that might have cold climates. Okay, so hopefully you were able to name some places with a colder climate. But Amanda, I think we should have a look at our map now and see if we can name any places. Yeah, sounds good. Let's have a look. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do is name four places with a cold climate. Okay, four places. Well, I'm going to start with Russia. Yes. I'm pretty sure it could be cold there at times. Um, how about Norway? Yes, well done. One of our um, Scandinavian countries. Greenland, which you can kind of see up there. Up the top here. And then I know there's, in the United States of America, um, Alaska is coming to mind. Yes, it is. Which is another kind of place. Quite cold there. Yeah. Now, one thing I have noticed about these countries is they're further away from the equator. Okay. okay. Now, I have it on good authority that <laughs> <laughs> from a geography teacher, because I am not a geography teacher, but um, if I put this ruler near Ecuador and I draw a line through it, that okay. would be the equator. So if I draw a line here, we can see that these countries are actually further away from the equator. Okay, so that's why they're that's kind of why they're kind of the colder climate. That's why they're colder. So the nearer countries to the equator are going to be warmer. Exactly. That's it. Right. Well, I've just learned that. Now, that's a new <laughs> one for me. That's definitely a new one for me. Now, what I find fascinating about all this is I'm always intrigued or interested to know what wildlife live in these colder climates. So like what animals live there? I think if I if I remember, because I'm really we, we actually talked about animals in Dream Space TV series one, didn't yeah. we? We talked about endangered species and I love learning more about animals and where they live and David Attenborough and all those shows. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'm pretty sure, definitely even for the ones we've named, yep. that there's polar bears there. Yes. Which um, obviously can be like talked about a lot, especially when we talk about things like climate change. Mm -hmm. I know polar bears are discussed a lot. So they definitely um, can be found in those countries. And it's interesting because people always wonder, well, how do they survive mm. in such cold climates? But the thing about polar bears are they have like a really thick fur. Yes. And they have a lot of blubber and their skin underneath their fur is black, so it attracts the warm rays from the sun. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I like know. how they evolve to kind of adapt to things. Exactly. And I'm pretty sure polar bears are one of the largest carnivores. They are. They have a really good sense of smell so that they can actually track down. And just in case you're not sure, a carnivore is an animal that eats um, other animals. Um, and we, because you could often hear of herbivores, which are animals that eat plant yeah. life, um, or omnivores Omnivore. eat both. Yeah. So, exactly. but they're carnivores and their sense of smell then obviously is what enables them to survive from a nutrition and a food point of view. Yeah, they can actually smell, like if I was here, they could smell for 13 kilometers away. Wow, 
wild. Okay. Um, but I'd be interested to see now, because you mentioned earlier on that we're going to be going to the ice plane, so a yes. cold climate. So yeah. I wonder if there's going to be polar bears there. I know, we'll have to keep a look out. Will we yeah. get logged in and go explore it? Let's get logged in. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to host you this time, I think. We'll work together again. Yes. Um, so I'm going to click on play and I'm going to go view library. I'm sure we're used to this by now. And we're going to go to a new biome. So biomes and worlds and biomes. And now we are in here. We scroll down and I can see here's my ice plains biome. I wish I had my hat and my gloves. <laughs> um, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to create my world. And then I suppose a couple of things I need to remember when mm -hmm. I go in here now, once it loads for me, I'm going to need to set my world position first because this is a big biome. Yeah. So I want Corey when we use our multiplayer to kind of arrive beside me. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, which is great. Ooh. So I'm going to use my command now to set my world position. Hopefully maybe you are thinking there now while you're watching, what is it? Um, so I'm going to do my forward slash and I'm going to say set world spawn and then i'm going to click go so now i'll go and host you yes, ready i am so i'm going to escape or the pause if you're using a touch screen and i'm going to use my join little symbol here start hosting confirm and it's cool i love the way it yeah like it's the, like a so i are you good to put in your passcode i am um cookie yeah we love a cookie sign mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the fish mm -hmm. and the potion. Oh, the potion. Okay, confirm. All right. So I will wait here. I'll have a little walk around and explore my environment while I'm waiting for Corey to arrive. It's nice blue skies today. Hopefully it stays Ooh. that way, Corey, for us. We Hopefully. might need to, if not, as we know, we have another command that can help us out with that one. Mm -hmm. And I can actually see there's animals here anyway. There's rabbits. I know we talked about toler, uh, toler bears. Toler bears. Toler bears. <laughs> so um, I'm here. There you are. Hey. Hey. hey OK, hey. great. Hey. <laughs> OK, uh, follow me over here this way, Corey. OK. So I can see there's like a really nice kind of space um, in around here. Kind of what you like, what you think of this space here? Oh, yes. Yes, I like so it. So we might um, we might make a plan now for what we want to actually build in this biome. Yeah, sounds um, good. And as we said, we are focusing on coding today. So when I say build, we're going to kind of use code to build, aren't we? Exactly. Um, so we'll, I'm have, I think I'm happy. If I actually might just fly up for a second. Can I fly? Yes, I can. OK, so I'm going to just have a little look around just kind of at the size of the space we have. All right, I might hop up here and we can make a quick plan, will we? Yeah, let's do it. Right, so um, we might use a grid again. Yeah, will we? always. <laughs> Love the grid. <laughs> so we'll get our grid here and then we can kind of measure it a bit better. All right, ruler, definitely gonna need that. So, right, so we are going to be coding um, for what we want to be built today. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But first mm -hmm. of all, we probably need to know exactly what we want to place yeah. and the size of it is gonna be important too. So we talked about polar bears there um, and other animals maybe that live in that habitat as well. And we don't want them to feel threatened by us yeah. um, and equally. Yeah, we don't want to feel threatened by them. <laughs> exactly, which we probably would. So I think we might start with a fence yeah. kind of area so that when we're inside there, we feel safe and secure and the animals outside don't feel threatened by us either. Yeah. So uh, what idea. size do you think will be the perimeter of, of this fenced um. area? I would say go 14 by 14. Okay, 14 by 14, perfect. And while I'm doing that, Corey, would you just have a little walk around there and yep. see? Do you know what I see? What? A polar bear. No way! Yeah! God, just in time, it's like the hair to talk about that. that is, oh, okay. hey cutie. I think that's 14, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, what was it, 15? Oh. Too far. Okay, there we go. Um, so, and then you said by 14? Yeah, by 14, so it's like a So square. if this is our fenced area, what are you thinking, as I'm drawn, you can kind of explain to everyone, what are we thinking of putting inside then? Okay, so I think we'll put some kind of snow hut inside. So that if any other kind of Arctic explorers um, come to our biome or our ice plains, they can go inside the snow hut. Yes, and we, well, we can live there for the moment. Yeah, true. Which is obviously handy. And you're thinking we're gonna definitely code that one? Oh, 100% we're going to code that one. Okay, cool. And I think we'll code the fence too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. 
And then we might just, when we've done that, we might have a little kind of look and see what else could we do. So I'm going to say that this is my fence. Make that more of an F. And we are going to say that's 14 and that's 14 so that we remember. Perfect. Okay. So then if that's the kind of, we need to fit in our snow hut. Yes. Here somewhere. So what size will we do the snow hut then, do we think? Oh, do we go like 10 by 10? Yeah, we can do. So kind of in here, maybe yeah. that might be a bit, maybe eight. Eight. <laughs> um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and by eight. So we're keeping them nice and square, same sizes. Okay. I'm excited for this now. And this is, do you know what this is going to be good for, Corey? What? Not just kind of knowing, not just knowing the actual length or the distance, like eight and eight, yeah. but like direction. Uh, because when we're yeah. coding, we're also going to need to include left, that's right, yeah. rights and lefts. <laughs> um, so that's going to be important too. Okay, so and this, sorry, this is going to be our snow hut. Yeah. And then obviously outside of this is kind of the biome we're in. So yeah. we're going to have kind of different things roaming around out here and stuff like that, aren't we? Yeah, it's okay. snow now Yeah. in our biome. True. <laughs> so we might need to change that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but now will be a good time to pause and make your plan for your area in the ice plains biome. Bearing in mind to kind of keep things as um, square as possible, because that will make it much easier when we get coding. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the kind of list of challenges we think you're going to have to complete yeah. to kind of get used to the coding element, mm -hmm. uh, which I said will be important for your competition entry when we explain in the next episode. So I'm going to hop over here um, and we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tasks that we think would be important. And if you can get through these, you're going to be flying it, aren't they? Yeah. And of course, we're going to help you with this. Yeah. We're going to bring you, start you off, explain things as we go, and uh, we'll have a ball, I'm sure, yeah. as, as we do it. So I'm going to hop back down. Oh yeah, I can see it's really dark it's for dark me. It's dark as well. So should we use our commands here to kind of just get the biome as we want it? Yeah, I think so, Corey. Okay, so actually, did you set my permissions? I don't know if I can do commands. Oh no, I haven't. So explain to me what do I have to do here. Okay, now? so you press your um, escape button. Yeah. You go to the four faces. Yeah, I have that. And then see where I'm a star? Yeah. I should be a crown. Ah, okay. Yeah. That means I can do commands. Yes, I've changed that. Now... Will I try it? Give it a shot. Okay, so um, I, first of all, I don't know about you, but I think I'll make it always day. Just while we're doing our code so we can actually see what's going on. Yeah, see so really I'm clearly. Literally just going to write always day, enter. Woohoo! Oh yeah, and it tells cool. me that you've just done that day-night cycle locked. Okay. Yeah. Next thing I'm going to do forward slash is um, it's weather, and I'm just going to put clear, which we used for brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, because it's gone great, guys. Do you remember when we first came in? I was like, it's lovely, yeah. these guys. Oh, yeah, that's much better. It's much brighter now, and we can see. Oh, there's a polar bear. Yeah, see? I'll keep away so they. Oh, you're going straight forward. I okay. went to the pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wouldn't advise that. Yeah. Um, right. So right. So we're going to get code now, aren't we? Yeah. And we can see. Weirdly enough, the very first thing this says teleport agent player but if you've never coded in minecraft before you might be like what is an agent yeah and um, now i actually brought my agent in by accident in one of the worlds we we're in you might have heard me saying oh yeah. ignore that in that's Mars. just my coding agent um <laughs> but what we need to do now is look at one more instruction that we will give either our laptop or our touch screen and um, to bring in our code builder yeah so i am going to click on c <gasps> oh i can see your agents beside you okay and it's automatically brought me in to see like my make code interface. But I just want to point out that if you um, have never gone in before, you might have this view. So you might have this view where it says choose your editor. And we are going to be working with Microsoft make code. And now I'm going to go back to the view that I had. And you can see I have different projects that I've already done here. Um, and there's lots of tutorials, but we are going to click on new project. Give your project a name. We might say uh, Ice Plains. After our world we're in, click Create. And it's now creating a new project. And you can see on the screen here, 
that on one side of the screen I have where I was, I can see the world still, mm -hmm. and on the other side of the screen I can see now where my code is going to be. But sometimes when you're getting familiar with this, you might want the code screen to be like the full screen. So to do that, you can click on this icon here to expand out the code builder screen. And now you can see you can even zoom in and make these blocks much clearer and things like that. Okay, now Corey, on a touch screen. Okay, on a touch screen, we can see that we have our speech bubble, which is our commands, our pause, which lets us like exit or save. And then we have a little picture of the agent. Perfect, so we so just, I just click on that. Click on that, and then code builder comes up. Brilliant, so and then you follow the same steps from there. Exactly. Right, so let's have a look here. So the first thing says teleport agent to player. Now I'm gonna just click back into my world and I'm gonna back up, aha. There's my agent, Amanda J agent, floating up in the air beside where I was. And I can look over at Corey, and I can see it says Corey's there and her agent as well. So that's brilliant. Um, but why we've said teleport agent to player is right now my agent's there. And look, if I kind of run away in a different direction, so I'm going to run over here, and I might decide I want my agent to carry out an instruction where I am now. And I look back, and the agent's all the way over there. Yeah. So one of the first lines of code we want to uh, give our agent is that if we give a certain command, our agent comes to stand or be where we are, which is going to be really useful. Yeah. So I'm going to go hit C again, C for code, back into Code Builder. And here's my program that I'd already created. It's still waiting for me. And there's a couple of blocks here. It says on start. I'm not going to use that one. So I'm going to put that one in the bin. And I do that by dragging it over to the categories on the left hand side and letting it go. And it makes a noise. And then I am left with a blue um, block that says on chat command run. Now I can edit that to suit me. And a chat command is what I'm going to put into my um, command bar or the yeah. bar we've looked at before, my chat area. So I'm going to change that to agent. So basically when I type in the chat command agent, and now I want to give the instruction that my first one, I want my agent to teleport to wherever I am in the world. So let's have a look at these categories over here. And they're all color coded, which should come in useful when you're comparing our code maybe with your screen. And I can see there's a, a kind of reddish kind of category here that says agent. So I feel like this is where we're going to find what we're looking for. And the very first block says agent teleport to player. So I'm going to bring that one in and I'm going to drop that one in underneath. So those of you that are familiar with visual programming or yeah. blocks will be kind of used to this idea of it, like, it being like a jigsaw. So I can't leave it out here for those that haven't used it before. Can't leave it out here. I need to make sure that it follows the sequence or the order of the instruction. So what this means is now when I type the command agent, this should happen. So okay. we test it out. Yeah, let's we do it. We always test our code as we go, don't we? Every time. So I'm going to come back in here. So remember my agent I can see is all the way over there. Now, to send in my command, for this time, I'm actually going to go T for talk instead yep. of forward slash. So T for talk. If you do forward slash, that's OK, but just delete the forward slash because yep. we haven't included that as part of our command. And I'm going to type in agent. Yeah? Yeah. And then I'm going to hit on my enter key or click enter. <laughs> Woohoo! Now, one thing I did notice there is I kind of was like, Where's my agent gone? But they literally teleport to where you exactly are. So sometimes you have to take a step back, don't yeah. you? They're like in <laughs> yeah. right beside you and they're smaller. So yeah. yeah, I can see my agent there. So that's the Same. first one. Corey, do you want to try go through the second uh, kind of task we have there? Okay, so we want to get the agent to walk. Okay, so mm. there we got the agent to teleport to us. But what if we actually want them to take like step by step walk? Mm. Okay, so again, I'm just going to move over here so I can see my agent and I'm going to press C for code. Now, we want to bring out another chat command, okay? Because we do still want to be able to teleport our agent, so that's fine, that can stay there, okay? But if we want another chat command, we go into player and we take out the first block of code. And you can see there it says on chat command jump. Now, I'm not going to leave that as jump because I'm no. getting my agent to walk, it just yeah. makes more sense. So I'm just going to say walk. Now, the code that I need to go into this, well, if you think about it, I'm getting my agent to walk, haven't I? So I might be able to find that code in agent. And it says here, agent move forward by one. So I'm going to take this out. And like Amanda said, you need to make sure it goes into your block. Okay. Now, I'm going to say agent move forward by, what do you think? 10. 10. Okay, yeah. go 10 steps. I'll join you. I'm doing this. I'm following your oh, instruction are you? here. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And then I'm just going to press this green uh, play button. 
which just means like that code is like saved. And now T to talk. And I'm gonna write my chat command, Amanda, which was? Walk. Walk, exactly. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> I could, run. Mine was running and yours was running behind, <laughs> so it's a nice little view there of it. Yeah. Oh, it's snowing again. Okay. Wait, and I just. But while that. you're fixing that, Corey, actually, now will be a good time to pause and practice and get uh, think about those first two commands. And maybe if you're not in Minecraft, don't worry. Maybe even just using pen and paper, write down the instructions you think you would give the agent to walk in a square. Okay, so we are going to now look at number three, which says agent access inventory. Um, and I'm actually going to take the next two, Corey, together. So agent okay. access inventory and agent build a line. Because the whole reason we want the agent to have an inventory, remember, to have materials, is so that they can build with it. Exactly. And we know now at this stage that you can build. So we've done loads of build challenges mm -hmm. across the episodes, and we hope you've had so much fun with them. So that's why this, this time we really want you to focus on the coding aspect yeah. and getting your agent to do the building for you. So if I look here, I'm going to look around. Where's my agent gone? Have I moved right? Oh, my agent's over there. So let's use my command. I'm going to do T for talk, agent, bring my agent up beside me. There you are. <laughs> How are you? Okay, now, come around to have a look in front. So what I'm going to do, first of all, to ensure that my agent has the materials um, that it needs, is I'm going to walk up and I'm going to right click on my agent. And it's saying there's nothing in my inventory, therefore I can't give the agent anything. So that makes sense. So I'm going to hop back out. I'm going to go E for an inventory. And what will I we'll build with? I suppose we'll build with snow, will we? Yeah, go on. Oh, no, that might be hard to see. Oh, so we yeah, might go actually. a different colour. We'll go with some sort of glass. We'll go with red glass. That might be easier. And you could obviously bring out more, but I'm just going to leave it at that for a second. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to walk up to my agent again. Remember, I right click. And you can see the red stained glass is in my inventory. And now I need to pass that on to my agent to mm -hmm. use. So in these slots up here, slot one, two, three, four, this is all my agent's area. I'm going to take my red stained glass and place that in slot one for my agent instead and i'm going to close i think it's important as well to recognize that that needs to go into slot one mm. sometimes i was putting those anywhere in the agent's inventory but if it's the first slot that you want to use you need to put that in there yeah and the other thing is right now if i cl right click again my agent has 64 um, kind of cubes of red stained glass. Mm -hmm. Once it runs out, it needs more. So you need to give the agent more in their inventory too. Exactly. But these are all little things we learned as we went. Yeah. Like we didn't know this at the start either. So you'll learn these little bits as you go as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to close that. So I'm happy enough now. My agent has um, some blocks in the inventory, so yep. we're good. So now it's agent build a line. And we're going to code this. So I'm going to go C for code and back in. Like Corey said, we've already, I think I'm going to leave the commands we've done yeah. and build a new command now. So I'm going to go player and on chat command. And this time I'm going to say uh, line. Okay. And that's going to be what I type, remember, when we do T for talk. Mm -hmm. Now, I want my agent to move, obviously, to go in a line. But I also need my agent to place these blocks as it moves. Yeah. So... Okay, I'll bring in the move one first because that makes sense to me. Yeah. It's definitely going to move. So let's go back. This is something we just did. So I'm going to go agent move forward by 10. Let's say again. And then I'm going to go back into my agent category because again, this is going to be something to do with, with the agent, no doubt. And I want everybody that's watching to have a really, I'll actually expand this now so it's very clear. Let's have a look at the different options in here. So even if your teacher wants to pause now and let everyone have a look and see what block would I pick out of this list that would help me get the agent to place the blocks as it moved. Right, so Corey, I can see in here there's lots of options which are great and we probably will use. Mm -hmm. But just down towards the end of the first kind of section, it says agent place on move. Yeah. And then it says false. We might need to look at that in a second. But let's, okay. that block is pretty promising. I'm going to bring that one in. And let's just think about this part now. So I'm going to just put this here for a second on the screen beside it. I haven't attached it yet. Mm -hmm. Let's think about the order of our instructions yeah. here. We have two options. Do we want, when we say the command line, do we want the agent to move forward by 10? And do we then tell the agent to place when it moves? Or do we tell the agent when we type in line 
to place as it moves and then start to move. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, and that's really important. So the order is really important here. So I'm gonna put this as my first instruction. So agent place on move, and I'm gonna change false to true, which you actually mentioned before when we talked about um, giving a command. Yep. So now when I type line, agent place on move is true, and my agent's gonna move forward. Okay. Fingers crossed. So I'm gonna come Ooh, back out. I'm watching. Okay, are you watching? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so up I'm in gonna, the sky. Okay, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go up in the sky because actually that's a good point. You should try not get in your agent's way. Yeah. Um, agent doesn't like that. No. Stay <laughs> out of their way. Uh, they're trying to build. Okay, so I'm gonna go T for talk, and remember my command was line, and let's go. <laughs> Woohoo! There we go. A nice long line <laughs> of red stained glass. Brilliant. Unreal. Happy with that. So what's the next one, Corey? We have agent build a fence. Build a fence. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'm going to take this one. And it's important as well that we think of our plan for this one. Mm. Will I bring it back up? Bring it back up so yeah. I can see it. Um, OK, so we want to build a fence, which was, if I'm right, 14 by 14. Mm -hmm. OK, so we're building a square fence here. Now, what I need to do is I need to make sure that my agent has enough room to build that, first of all. Yes, good From shout. where they are standing. So I'm just going to have a look. I might actually count one, two, three, four, five, six. No. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get my agent to teleport somewhere else so there's enough room. So let me think. I'm gonna move back here. I'm gonna do my T for talk. And I said agent. Okay. And now, hmm. Okay. So I'm encountering a little bit of a problem here. Right. And that's because if I look at my agent, okay, look at the direction they're facing. They're actually mm. facing into like a wall almost. Okay. So would it be like your agent is facing this way? Yeah. Would we say? Yeah. Okay. So before I even do my code, I'm gonna actually have to turn my agent, am I? So that's gonna be well that's gonna be part of your code, isn't it? Yeah, that's gonna be part yeah. of my code. So actually can you write this up here to remind me? Okay. Just write up and um, make sure to turn your agent. So yeah. Because if you look at the arrow, I suppose, your agent is facing this way yeah. and you want the agent. So it would make sense that they would have to turn. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I'm going to go 14 by 14. Okay. So I'm going to pop in. I'm going to go C for code. And I'm going to take out a new check command. Okay. And I'm going to bring it out. And again, I'm going to change it. It says jump, but I might call it fence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the first thing that I need to do? Well, you said, you told me to write this down for you. Exactly, turn. Yeah. Um, and I almost forgot. Okay, so here we have agent turn left. So I'm going to do that. Um, but I actually want them to turn left again then. So okay. it's like a 180. Okay. okay. So agent turn left, agent turn left. And now we get into the actual build of the Oh, fence. so your agent was actually, sorry, your agent was actually facing that way. Yes, I wanted them to do a full one. So now what's happened is, sorry, I'll move this out a bit. So it was facing that way. So now it's after going that way first. So yeah. it went left and now it's face turned left again. Exactly. Yeah. And these, these are kind of like things that we encounter all the time. Yeah. They, we have to really use our critical thinking skills here. And well, I always have to do what I just did there, which <laughs> is I like stand up and I normally go uh, left. Same, yeah. Yeah. same. Okay, so now we have agent is perfect in the right position. And now and we're going to start building this fence. Yeah. So I remember from when you were building the line and that the first thing we need to do is say place on move. Mm. So I'm going to go back into my agent and I'm going to take out agent place on move. And I'm going to put that next in my sequence of instructions because remember my order is really important. Now, I'm going to change false to true. So now my agent knows it has to start building, okay? And the next thing I need to do now is actually build a square. So remember earlier on when you told everyone to pause and think about how they would build a square. Mm. So I'd be interested to see how everyone got on with that. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually get the agent to move forward. And Amanda, what are we moving forward by this time? So we're going forward by 14. Exactly. Yeah. So agent is gonna move forward by 14. Mm -hmm. And then what? So if you think about this, your agent's walking this way. Remember, they're not gonna, they're gonna face the direction you landed on there. So they're gonna get to 14 and stop. Mm -hmm. But they're still gonna be facing that way. And we're gonna to need to get them to turn again to go that way. Exactly, perfect. Okay, so they're gonna to have to turn right. So I'm gonna bring out agent, turn left, 
but this time I'm going to click on the arrow beside left mm. and I'm going to change it to right. Brilliant. So now they're facing this way. Now, what's our next line of code going to be? So just, I think, we, we same again, isn't yep. it? Move forward by 14. Move forward by 14. Yeah. And then we need to... Turn right. Turn right. Yeah, same again. So that we're facing this way. Turn right. And now we need to move forward again. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're probably, I'm sure everyone's kind of able to even tell yeah. you at this stage, aren't they? They're probably screaming at the screen going, yeah. move forward, turn right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're on the home stretch. Woohoo! Way. So we're just going to go all the way back. And you can just see then, does your agent stop there? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Fingers um, crossed, everybody. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I'm going to fly up so I can see. Yeah, bye. I'm okay. not in your way, am I? T for talk. Fence. <laughs> Enter. Look. Left, left. <gasps> Woohoo! Woo oh my goodness. Yes. Turn right, turn right. Yes. Yes. I have a great view here as well. Yes, yeah, so do I. I can see you floating up in the air there. Woo! And this is actually great getting the agent to do yes, all this. Yes, 100%. This will take me ages. Sure, you see me build my fence in uh, episode one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. In some respects, I think I'm much faster with the coding instructions than I am with the building. Uh, wow, now, Corey, great. Okay, little bit of a problem, um, but not really. Um, the agent has stopped building, has left me a gap there. But that's okay, because I'm actually going to put my gate there oh, because it's a fence, okay. remember? Um, one thing, though, is I can't um, put my gate there because the agent's standing in the way. Uh, so, sure, what am I going to do? Teleport. Exactly. Out of the way. Agent, While you're here. doing that, though, I think what we will say is that might be where our next, if we look at our next challenge, is to build a snow hut. <laughs> and that idea of the agent maybe getting blocked from completing its last step might be a problem or a yeah. little bit of an issue when we uh when we do our snow hut so we yeah. might need to overcome that with the next one it worked out perfectly for this case yeah because we have our gate now because remember we're trying to keep ourselves um safe and we also don't want any of the uh, wildlife to feel threatened by us so we're happy in our little fenced area i'm going to pop down in here um and i'm inside now so 14 by 14 corey so i think i will bring a my agent in here so we're going to look at our our snow hut. Mm -hmm. But while I'm doing this, I really want everyone to be thinking about a snow hut. So we've just done a square on the ground. Yeah. But obviously something like a hut, it's not just that one block of ground level, it's going to be going upwards. Yeah. So we're going to need to kind of circle or loop upwards. Mm -hmm. So just, I want everyone to be thinking now, what instructions would we need to give for that? There's yeah. going to be a lot more, isn't there? Yeah. So let's think about that. But meanwhile, I'm in here. I can see Corey up there floating in the air. Hey. Hi. Um, okay, so I'm going to go T for talk and I'm going to bring my agent in. Oh, there you are. Ah, there you are. Now, like you, my agent's facing the wrong, wrong way. So we're going to have to pull my agent away or turn my agent around to begin with. That's okay. So, final one, a snow hut. Stay oh. with us on this one. I'm going to go C for code and we are in to our uh, coding, code builder area. Going to get another command. We have loads of commands built up now, which is great. So I'm going to go on chat command and I'm going to just say hut. And actually, I'm going to click back out, sorry, because I need to give my, I don't think I want my hut out of staying red oh, glass. No. So I don't think I have any snow in my inventory. So I'm going to really quickly go in here and um, get snow or ice. No, ice. Ice? Ice. Okay. Probably has it easier to see as well because it's like a bluey colour. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to come back out. I'm going to go up to my agent, right click, we know now. I'm going to take out the red stained glass and give my agent the ice instead. Okay, brilliant. So now it has the materials it needs. C for code and I'm back in. So when I type the chat command hut, what do we want the agent to do? So it's going to be similar to your instructions there, isn't yeah. it? That it's going to need to walk around in a square. Mm -hmm. Corey, I might need to get up here. Oh, whew, for a visual. Okay. <laughs> So, let me get my chair out of the way. You start maybe at the, or actually, will you bring out that yellow cube? This might be useful to show everybody. Ooh. Hopefully everyone can see. Okay. Okay. So if you go from here, Corey, and you're going to go, just pretend you're like, so say you walk 10 spaces down that way. This way? Yeah. You're going to go 10. I really am like the agent. You really have to tell me what to do. Okay. I'm going to go 10. So just pretend 10. Do, 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 do. Okay. So you're going to turn right. Yeah. Don't Come this way a little bit. 10. Come up a little bit, yeah, and then turn right, go back 10 to be fate, and then wait there, turn right, and then 10. And look what happens. Oh, okay, 
Keep walking into this thing. Yes. So this is what happened when we did the fence, basically. Yeah. When the agent returned, it like bumped into the fence. That was an obstacle. Yeah. So that's going to be a problem because for a hut, if we think about this now, we're going to need to do what Corey just did there. We're going to need the agent, thank you, come back to, yeah, destroy what was go in front up. of it, finish out, and then go up a level. Exactly. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I'm tall so, now. Yes. And then we want, let's, like, I know this is, we'll go back over this in a second. Then we want the agent to do that again, then go up a level, then go again, go up a level, and until we're happy. So as, for as many levels as we want, how, how, I suppose how tall we want the hut, that's up to us. Mm. So there's a lot, lot of little thinking yeah. to do there, isn't there? Yeah. So let's come in and let's, let's go thro uh, slowly through the code here. Okay, so I'm going to do my chat command hut, and Corey I might get you to put the weather back tonight yeah. so I can see it's snowing <laughs> again. Um, right, so we are going to go into our agent. Now remember, I'm going to click out here. My agent is currently facing the fence and I want my agent to maybe start building in this direction first, okay? So I'm gonna need my agent to turn left in this case before it starts moving, okay? So I'm gonna go back in, C for code, agent, agent turn left is my first instruction. Now remember, when my agent is moving, I want my agent to be placing these ice blocks exactly. that I've given it. So I'm gonna go back into agent and we're gonna do this again, place on move and I'm gonna change that to true. So we're turning that one on. And the other thing we're going to include here is what we mentioned a second ago. So not only do we want it before agent moves, not only do we want to say, make sure you place as you move, we also want to say, and as you're moving, destroy any obstacles yeah. in your way because we want you to finish out your instructions. Okay, we don't want you to be blocked by any obstacles along the way. And just to point out the only obstacle the agent will not destroy is you <laughs> as the player. So make sure you do not get in the agent's way because if you're in the way, it will skip you. Yeah. All right. So we want to look for something to do with destroy. So let's have a look in agent and let's go down a little bit here. Oh, no, sorry. So I don't see destroy. I wonder. Well, there is an arrow beside place on move. Aha. So I don't know, would that help? So I'm going to bring in this one. I think you'll be on to something. And I'm going to click beside the arrow, beside place on move. And I'm going to say, just, there's two things. Here it says place from any slot. That's the inventory. Or destroy obstacles. There we go. There we go. Okay, so sometimes those arrows can be very useful. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn on that to true as well to say, yeah, that is what we want you to do. We want you to place on move. We want you to destroy things in your way. And from here now, Corey, it's literally just me getting my order of the movements. Exactly. If I get my order right, we are flying it. Yeah. So I want my agent, if I come back out here, I'm going to have a look. I'm going to actually fly up in a second, just to come backwards. So my agent's going to turn left and then it's going to go this way. And we said, was it eight? I think it was eight, eight. I remember. Yeah. Okay, in our plan. So we are going to say, turn left, move forward by eight, turn left, move forward by eight, turn left, move forward, forward by, by eight, eight turn, turn left, left, move, move forward, forward by eight. eight. Is there anything uh, <laughs> strange about that? Um, well, I think you're just basically doing the same thing over and over again. Yes. We, if you think about it, I just said the same two instructions yeah. four, four times. times. Move forward by eight, turn, turn left. left. So how about we use a loop here? Definitely. Yeah, we could have used it with our, with our fence, but yeah. we want everyone to see that there's different ways of doing things. So, so you don't have to use a loop, but it will speed it up and I'm going to use the loop. So I'm going to go into agent. I'm going to do my move forward by eight. And I'm going to do my turn left. There's also other ways of doing this, by the way. We've had lots of students visit in dream space, haven't we? Yeah. That figured this out in different ways. And here we have a category called loops, okay? A green one. I'm going to take that out. And in our loops, loops will just repeat the instructions that we wanted to. So we decide what will loop. Yeah. So let's grab the repeat block and let's, that, let's get that to wrap around the movements we just called out, the two instructions, move forward by eight and turn left. So now it's, you can see it's a C-shaped block wrapped around those two instructions. Four is the correct number. I don't mm -hmm. need to change that, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so that's gonna be, that should be my first initial yeah. square complete. 
Now, we could test it, but just for time, I would encourage you to yeah. test this and then fly off and build somewhere else. But I would say stop there and test if you were doing this. Yeah. But I'm going to just keep going for a second. So once my agent has done, I don't know if anyone remembers the acrobatics of Corey a minute ago. <laughs> but once my agent has done the square, we actually need the agent to then Go up. step up by how many? One. One. So sometimes people think, oh, but we want 10 levels. Yeah, let's step up by so 10. So let's go up by 10. But that means your agent is actually going to fly up <laughs> by 10 before it builds again and leave yeah. a big gap between the ground and the, where you are, yeah. right? So we want to just go up by one and do this again. So let's just find up by one first. So agent, in we go. And again, I'm not seeing the word up, but I can see that with my agent move forward, There's I have an arrow. an arrow. So I'm going to bring that one out and I'm going to click the arrow and change that to up and as I'm happy for it to be by one. Right, so we're gonna stop again. So we've said the agent's gonna turn, yep. the agent's gonna place on move, destroy, destroy things in its obstacles. way, and when it's done a square, it's gonna go up, up. by one. Okay. And what do we want it to do? Okay, well, how many floors do you want in your hut? Uh, we'll say six. Okay, so then we're gonna to have to loop all of that, aren't we? Okay, so it's going to be up by one. Up by one. It's going to do a square again. Yeah. Up by one, a square again. So you can see we're saying the same stuff. Again and again. Right, so this is where we need to be careful with our loop because we're not going to have only one loop here. We're going to have a loop within a loop. Yeah. Nested <laughs> loops. So we are going to go into loops and we're going to get our repeat again. And think about where we want to put this now. I want everyone, again, I'm going to just hold it here for a second. I'm going to actually drop it here. And I want people to, when they're looking, think, where should Amanda place that loop? What are we actually trying to achieve here with this repeat? So I'm going to take it. and I'm actually going to let it wrap around the first loop mm -hmm. and then the move up by one instruction. So it looks, I know it looks a bit maybe funny because a lot of green. <laughs> and then my repeat here is going to be my floors. Yeah. So we said six, six there. I might say five so we have time to see the agent do it. Yeah. So repeat five times. So what it's going to repeat five times is the square, which is this loop, and up by one, and then it goes square, up by one, square, up by one, square, and you get the idea. <laughs> okay, hopefully this works. Okay, we always, we always yeah. even though we've done this before, you I always know, I get, get a little nervous. bit nervous. So I'm going to make sure, Woo. Corey, will you make sure your agent and yourself are not in my agent's way? <laughs> yeah, we are Please. not. So I'm going to hop out here. I'm flying in the air, so I know I shouldn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get out of the way here. Right, I'm going to take a better view. Front and row I'm going to go T for talk. Hush, wasn't it? Yeah. Here we go, everybody. Fingers crossed, please. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay, well, we're off. I wouldn't woohoo just yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. We don't know. The key thing will be does it go up the level that we want it to? Woo! Okay. I feel so, like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you do love dancing. Okay, so our agents, I'm going to just leave that there for a second. Agents flying around, you'll see on the screen. Um, and it should do what we said. It should yeah. be the five levels. But it's not going to do a roof for me. And my hut will be very cold. And that's where, we're not going to do this now, but that's where we can see the kind of combination of our coding and our building skills working together exactly so that's the power of learning to code you can mix this stuff up and as we said we'll talk about this in our next episode you will need to have a little bit of code in to show us how you got on for your competition okay so my age is actually finished now so i can see standing proudly on top <laughs> of the perimeter of my hut as it should it looks yeah, fab i know thanks <laughs> okay so what did we cover today well today we learned how to code and we learned how to code in minecraft education edition Okay, we also learned a lot about colder climates and polar bears. Mm. And for your episode challenge, what we want you to do is do the final task. See, can you figure this one out using the categories you see at the side and using our commands? Could you get some polar bears to spawn outside of your fenced area? Not in your hut, I wouldn't advise. <laughs> um, so outside of your uh, fenced area, that would be good. But also, please do take the time to practice those coding yeah. skills. Um, and go through the tasks set out to you and actually just explore yeah, Code definitely. Builder because there's lots of other stuff we haven't covered there as well. Loads. But join us next time then in our episode six oh. where we talk about the competition that we are going to be launching in association with RTE and the Minecraft education team. So we can't wait to give you some tips and tricks about how you could succeed with that and make sure that every school in Ireland has the opportunity to enter. Okay, chat to you then. Bye. Bye.